Farmers have always been concerned about the fertility of their land. However, the very notion of fertility has evolved over the years. The focus on increased agricultural yield led to the development of intensive production methods, particularly during the second half of the 20th century. This was a matter of increasing, at any cost, farm size, mechanization, fertilization and crop protection. These days we are concerned with the great environmental challenges and our objective is sustainable fertility, aimed at boosting the entire agricultural ecosystem whilst respecting its every component. The main environmental challenges are well known. Improving the quality of soil and water. Greater efficiency in fertilization through the use of new fertilizer technology, which together with manure will reduce the leaching of nutrients into the groundwater. Saving water. Blue gold resources are threatened by global warming and agricultural biofuel production strategies. By increasing water retention in the soil and enhancing the efficiency of water use of the plant, we are helping agriculture to consume less water. The fight against global warming. Agricultural activities make a significant contribution to greenhouse gas emissions, carbon dioxide of course, but also methane and nitrogen oxides. By optimising the dynamic of nutrients in the ecosystem, we can harvest just as much whilst polluting less. It is therefore an imperative that productivity objectives are reconciled with respect for the environment. This new approach to fertilisation is fortunately compatible with the farmer's economic concerns. Indeed, in gaining better control of fertiliser action and through a better understanding of the dynamic of nutrients in soil and ecosystem, fertilisers can be used in a more efficient way. In other words, farmers will obtain more whilst consuming less. What will the fertilizers of tomorrow look like? We put this question to Patrick Dujardin, Professor of Plant Physiology in the Agricultural University of Gembleu. Before responding to your question, I suggest we take a look at the journey made through the soil by nutrients. This enables us to think about the best way to improve the efficiency of fertilizers, that is, to reconcile sustainable fertility with the farmer's economic concerns. In order to nourish themselves, plants only take their nutrients in soluble form, drawing on a short-term reserve known as soil solution. Fertilizers applied to the soil dissolve and join this reserve. The soil also has two other types of reserves, a long-term reserve consisting of crystalline minerals which are insoluble and a medium-term reserve consisting of microparticles capable of fixing and releasing nutrients. This reserve is known as the clay humus complex, or adsorbing complex. Each compartment has its own specific role, yet it is important to understand the exchanges between these compartments, because it is precisely upon these exchanges that the sustainable fertility of the soil is built. First of all, I suggest that we examine the medium-term reserve. The soil contains adsorbent complexes known as clay humus particles, which are made up of mineral elements, layers of clay, and organic elements, humic acids. These complexes give the soil its capacity to adsorb, to retain water and nutrients more or less effectively. Their surface carries electrical charges which are mainly negative, anions, which are able to attract and fix the positively charged nutrients, cations, through the play of the electrostatic forces, which trap and then release the nutrient from the complex and which enable it to return to the soil solution. This process of adsorption-desorption is of fundamental importance in the fertility of the soil because it confers buffer capacity upon it. The clay humus complex acts as a real magnet and offers a binding capacity capable of gradually making the nutrients available to the plant. Now let's take a look at the long-term reserve. This is made up of the mineral elements trapped in the crystals as a result of the deterioration of the parent rock, but also of certain elements coming from the soil solution which are rendered insoluble. This is the case, in particular, with the precipitation of phosphates. These elements are capable of taking the opposite path and resolubilizing themselves, particularly under the effect of acid attacks. They are then restored to the system and are, once more, usable by the plant. What makes this model useful? This model allows us to locate and quantify the nutrient loss, and thus also to see how the efficiency of fertilizers can be improved. Let's localize these losses. 
there are three different kinds. The first loss happens at the leaching level. In this case, the nutrients are swept along by the water before the plant has a chance to take them up, or before they become set into the clay humus complex. These are mostly anions, nitrates in particular, negatively charged elements which escape the magnetization of the adsorbent complex. The second loss results from volatilization, which is also known as denitrification. A fraction of the soil's nitrogen is returned to the atmosphere, including in the form of nitrogen oxide, a gas which contributes to the greenhouse effect. Lastly, a third loss lies in the insolubilization of nutrients, also known as retrogradation. Phosphorus is a key player. A large part of the phosphorus brought by the fertilizer precipitates with the calcium, iron or aluminium depending on the pH of the soil. Now that we have specified the origin of the losses of nutritive elements in this system, what can we do to limit such losses? An initial approach is that of precision farming, which aims to optimize what is offered by fertilizers in accordance with the development of the plant and with the heterogeneity of its needs at the level of a plot of land. Location and dividing up of the supply of fertilizers are the watchwords of precision farming. Alongside this is optimized management of soil fertility, which will seek to reinforce the medium-term reserve and which we have called the clay humus complex. Farmers are well aware of this when they recognize the value of the humus, organic fertilizer and crop residues in ensuring the good health of their land. Scientists, for their part, observe that, in the medium term, the buffer capacity reduces losses through leaching and by volatilization. In the same way, those elements liable to insolubilize, such as phosphates with calcium, can be separately connected by the adsorbent complex, thus preventing their encountering one another, and thereby preventing their precipitation. But the clay humus complex can also offer the plant other services. In addition to the magnet and buffer roles we have already described, it is a decisive agent in the formation of aggregates, which structure and aerate the soil. Thanks to its action on the soil's porosity, the clay humus complex encourages growth in the activity of certain microorganisms known as aerobes. That is, they depend on the presence of oxygen in the soil. Among these microorganisms are the bacteria responsible for nitrification, which takes part in the conversion of nitrogen from its organic form to its mineral form, specifically nitrates. Moreover, the aggregates improve the soil's ability to retain water, which in turn slows down leaching and loss through evaporation. Lastly, they confer on the land the crumb structure that is typical of fertile lands, which are less sensitive to problems of soil compaction. The clay humus complex is therefore active in the retention of both nutrients and water, as well as in the structure of the soil. All fertilization techniques aiming to reconcile productivity and environmental concerns must reinforce this medium-term reserve in one way or another. Let's return now to the original question. What is an ideal fertilizer? It is a fertilizer which will bring nutrients to the plant in a gradual way, that is, by following the rhythm of the plant's needs whilst limiting the losses we have identified. This gradual release is found in traditional practices when organic materials are being used and when humification converts this organic matter into mineral elements that can be directly used by the plant. In reality, this is a slow and complex process involving a whole series of reactions to which soil bacteria make a major contribution. Among the humic substances obtained, we find the following soluble compounds, humic and fulvic acids. These substances bond themselves to the clays to form the adsorbent complexes discussed before. Manuring land with good organic fertilizer is effectively supplying it with humic substances that are indispensable to the formation of adsorbent complexes. This is the most highly valued technique for maintaining a healthy level of humus in the soil, but these supplies become inadequate in most crop regions, and it is therefore necessary to turn to other sources of humic acid.
Just recently, purified and concentrated humic substances have become available. These are extracted from leonardite, a sedimentary rock dating from the Carboniferous period. We have humic substances available in addition to traditional organic fertilizers. Both converge definitely to reinforce this medium-term soil reserve, which, as we have seen, is essential to the fertility and efficiency of fertilizers. The humic extracts act upon the fertility of the soil, offering plants a high-quality nutritional context. In addition to the effects relayed by the soil, there are direct growth regulation type effects on the physiology of the plant. The fulvic acids, which are smaller and more mobile than the humic acids, seem to be directly taken up by the plant. A significant effect on the development of root activity has indeed been recognized. First of all, the roots respire. They do this in order to produce the energy which is necessary for the taking up of nutrients, and more particularly, of phosphorus and nitrates. There is also stimulation of root elongation and the development of lateral roots, the ramification of the root system. Lastly, there is also stimulation of the development of the root hairs, which play a primary role in taking up nutrients. In their turn, the roots have an effect on the soil, First of all, they breathe, which has the effect of acidifying the soil and contributing to the desorption of the nutrients attached to the clay humus complex. The roots also emit a whole series of substances which will encourage the development and activity of bacteria into the rhizosphere. And once they are dead, these roots contribute to increasing the soil's organic reserves. Humic substances also have an effect on chlorophyll tissues. They seem to act as chelating agents for microelements, thus promoting their availability and mobility within the plant tissues. The improved mobility of magnesium, iron, copper and zinc reinforces the activity of chlorophyll. Lastly, certain studies show that humic substances also perform an antiperspiring action, which of course contributes to the improved efficiency of water use, helping the plant cope with water shortages. Humic extracts thus offer a major technical solution in terms of the mineral nutrition of plants. By improving the sustainable fertility of the soil, the efficiency of fertilizers and the nutrition of the plants, they reconcile the farmer's economic concern with current environmental preoccupations. They meet the requirements of agricultural production that is more profitable and better controlled. With almost 20 years of experience, Tradecorp is a pioneer in terms of the production and formulation of humic acids. Tradecorp uses American Leonidite, which has the reputation to be the best source of humic substances. This raw material offers every guarantee in terms of both quality and safety. Tradecorp humic extracts are an appreciable addition to organic fertilizers and offer immediate effect, ease of application, long-term availability, composition that is controlled, sure and constant. The Tradecorp solution, Humifirst, Humifirst WG. Humifirst is a liquid solution of humic and fulvic acids used as a generalized or localized spray. Humifirst WG, in the form of soluble granules, can be incorporated into mineral or organic fertilizers. Its presence within the fertilizer optimizes their efficiency and therefore improves the nutrition of plants. Combine sustainability and profitability with Tradecorp.